I want to take the time this morning to video another devotional, this time from Psalm 106, which happened to be my daily reading this morning. So I go through the one-year Bible. I happen to be on May 9th, which is 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, John chapter 6 in the New Testament, and Psalm 106, starting in verse 13 through 31 in the Psalms. And I'll read for you uh, the first, let's say, 10 verses. But they, the Israelites, soon forgot what the Lord had done and did not wait for his counsel. In the desert, they gave in to their cravings. In the wasteland, they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but, but, he, uh, but sent a wasting disease upon them. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. And I'll stop there at verse 25. So if you have time, you can push pause. Go to Psalm 106. Follow along. Verse 13 through 25. And what I wrote down is nine characteristics, nine qualities, just in those, first, in those few verses uh, that are negative qualities um, in which to learn from the mistakes that that first generation of Israelites made after being delivered from Egypt. Firstly, in verse 13, it says they forgot what God had done. So instead of remembering, instead of walking in thanksgiving, instead of walking in reflection, what, instead of journaling down what the Lord had done and, and meditating on that with a spirit of thanksgiving, they forgot what God had done in the past. We cannot make that same mistake. Number two, also verse 13, they did not wait for his counsel. In other words, they, they moved forward lacking a spirit of prayer. Uh, they moved forward in their own wisdom without prayer. How many of us make the same mistake? We cannot forget what God has done. We cannot move forward in our own wisdom without seeking his counsel each and every day. Verse 14, they gave into their cravings. So they, they, they pursued the lusts of their flesh without self-denial and self-discipline. Third lesson, how many of us how, we, how strong is our flesh? How weak is our spirit? Do we have a, a regular um, routine of self-denial and self-discipline? And I know for our family, we fast on a weekly basis. And many believers throughout the last 2,000 years have done the same. One of the benefits of fasting is denying the flesh, crucifying the flesh, and walking in self-denial to humble the flesh so that the spirit might grow stronger and we might be able to walk in accordance with the spirit. Uh, also in verse 14, they put God to the test. So there was a lack of a fear of God rather than fearing God and obeying his commands. They proceeded, they moved forward in which they knew was wrong and yet they did it anyway. They, there was a lack of a fear of God in their life. Now, verse 16 lists the fifth quality. They grew envious of Moses. So rather than a lack of contentment, uh, they had envy. They were comparing themselves with others. There was a lack of contentment. That attitude took over the camp um, and uh, corrupted the, 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 the people of Israel. 
Number six, verse 20, they exchanged their glory for an image of a bull which eats grass. So rather than the glory of God, rather than the glory of the creator, they exchanged a focus on the creator for a focus on creation. Because even idols, even demons, even Satan himself is has been created by God, by the creator. We cannot make that same mistake. Verse 24, 25. They did not believe his promises. So there was a lack of faith in the life of the Israelites. They grumbled in their tents. There was a lack of appreciation with that negative attitude. And finally, instead of obeying the Lord, they, they chose to walk in a spirit of rebellion, identifying rather with Satan compared with Jesus. Jesus walked in perfect obedience to his father. He humbled himself. He put his will on the back burner to prioritize the will of the father rather than follow Christ's example. The people of Israel chose to rebel and identify with Satan in this spirit of disobedience and rebellion. So again, just reading this morning, as I go through my Bible, I highlight, I write in red or underline or I circle in red any sin, any negative things I see in Scripture. Um, I've got various highlighters. I've got various colors. And what I did as I was reading this, this just happened to stand out. Went back through it a second time. Went back through it a third time. Put numbers in the margins. And this is how I daily feed on Scripture. I, wanna, I don't want to just read and walk away. I want to read to understand. I want to read to be able to chew on. I want to read to be able to come up with a devotional concept that can maybe perhaps be shared later on in the day with somebody in need. Uh, and I would encourage you to do the same. So look back over Psalm 106, verse 13 through 25, and see if you can write in the margin these nine character qualities, negative character qualities of the Israelites, and then put maybe in blue, if they're in red, put in blue the opposite, the contrasting quality. You know, rather than disobedience, obedience, rather than forgetting what God has done, we need to remember and be thankful. You know, you can write that in scripture and then you have a permanent record of this devotional in scripture anytime you need it. Uh, I hope this was a blessing to you. My goal, as always, is to teach you, is to disciple you, is to train you as to how I read scripture and what I see as I read. And this, does, this takes no preparation whatsoever. I mean, as long as we are in Scripture on a daily basis, feeding on Him, we don't need to prepare. Uh, all we need to do is spend time with Him first and foremost, and we will have something to feed others throughout the rest of the day. Uh, it takes no extra work of preparation if we first prioritize spending time with Jesus each and every morning. That's my encouragement for you. That's my challenge. Psalm 106, there you have it, verse 13 through 25.